One of these ladies is going to analyze the handwriting of this panel. Tom Poston, Dina Merrill, Johnny Carson, and Peggy Cass. What is your name, please? My name is Dorothy Sarah. My name is Dorothy Sarah. My name is Dorothy Sarah. It's to tell the truth. And here is your host, Bud Collier. Thank you and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Brought to you this week by Aerowax. Made with natural wax for a shine that mops back naturally. Aerowax. Good evening, panel. Hi, Good evening to you all this evening. Will you please open your envelopes, take out your affidavit cards for the first time, and follow along as I read from this first one. I, Dorothy Sarah, am a handwriting analyst and past president of the American Graphological Society. I analyze personality traits and potential abilities through handwriting for psychiatrists, marriage counselors, and business organizations. I have analyzed the panelists' handwriting without their knowledge. <laughs> and here is what I found. Tom Poston's handwriting proves him to be adaptable, imaginative, and easily bored by routine detail. Oh, look at that. He has no Repostive. financial sense. Financial sense? No financial sense, is an incurable optimist, and at heart a romantic, old-fashioned type gentleman. Oh. <laughs> the handwriting, the handwriting of Dina <laughs> Merrill shows fine taste in color and design and excellent coordination and rhythm. She is a good hostess and enjoys meeting interesting people. She is, however, more shy than appears on the surface. Her head tries to dominate her heart, but she is basically warm and sentimental. No. Happiest when sharing her life with others. Johnny Carson's writing uh -oh. indicates that he is not really as casual as he looks. He is a complete perfectionist and is extremely self-critical. With his original thinking and his quick wit, he has still a strong respect for the dignity of both himself and others. He is in the true sense of the word, he is in the true sense of the word, an individualist. The handwriting of Peggy Katz yeah. shows her dislike of pretense and pretentious people. She is instinctively clever and has a lilting sense of humor, but her versatility is often a liability since she tries to do too many things at the same time. She has keen intuition but she is sometimes generous to the point of being gullible. Signed, Dorothy Sarah. <laughs> Peggy, you shouldn't monkey around with your career. That's what she's trying to say. Now, panel, you know why we asked each of you last yes. week to write a note of thanks to yes. the nation's TV editors for voting us the top uh, game show you on television. Shameless <laughs> tricksters. <laughs> Ladies, you all have samples of the handwriting, do you? Hold them all up. There they are. Okay, you have them to refer to. All right, you heard them all claiming to be Dorothy Sarah, handwriting expert and analyst. Let's begin with our own handwriting expert, Tom Poston. Tom? Oh, thank you, bud. I think. <laughs> uh, Miss Sarah, number two, uh, do, you, do you know George Abbott, the uh, fantastically successful uh, uh, Broadway and motion picture director and producer and writer. He's a handwriting expert. Is that true, number two? Yes, he is. Uh, number three, why did you say that, that I was careless with my money and had no... Would you hold this for me, Dina? <laughs> <laughs> why do you say I'm careless with my money? I think I don't see where you get that in my hand. Well, you have very large spaces. You make very large spaces. In my wallet? In, in your writing. Thank you. Number one, how can you say that I'm romantic and, and, uh, and, uh... Did you hear the gun? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Dina. <laughs> well, you're romantic because you are, uh, basically a conventional man, even though you try very hard to give the appearance of, of other things. For instance, every time you make a T, you give such a strong downstroke that it shows you really want to hew to the line and be the good old-fashioned romantic type. Okay, thank Dina. You. It's ten dollars shy here. <laughs> uh, Miss Sarah, number one, uh, do you agree with what Miss Sarah, number three, said about the the spaces? Uh, is that spaces between letters, number three, or spaces between words? Both. Spaces Both. between letters, between words, and between lines. 
and it's between widely lines. spaced. I see. Um, what can you tell me, number one, about spaces between letters? Well, the spaces between letters show a lack of uh, thrift because he's using up so much space of the paper in writing. My goodness, you ask all about Tom. You didn't ask anything about yourself. We may never know about you. Johnny. This is most interesting. <laughs> uh, n number two, uh, what is the correct term for what you do? Gra graph, uh, graphologist. A, a graphologist. I'm a graphologist. Good. Uh, <laughs> you, you have my writing there? Do you have my writing there? Right there, right here. Well, can you tell? Am I successful in love? You try to be. I'm trying to be. <laughs> <laughs> I, I give it all I can. Uh, you are a perfectionist, however. I beg your pardon? You are a perfectionist. A in, born in what? perfectionist. In what? In almost everything. So almost, Johnny. Almost everything. <laughs> Peggy. Uh, number two. Do you feel that if uh, people who were engaged got their handwriting analyzed before they got married, they would avoid later divorces? I think it would be a very good idea. Marriage counselors send uh, specimens to us. I see. Number three, uh, if, the, if once they're married and they go to the marriage counselor and you get an example of the writing and it doesn't match, do you say, okay, kids, you've had it? Oh, no. Or do you advise them to no, change their writing? No, we point out what each one is basically and then they have to adapt one to the other. I see. Number one, does IBM use this? I really never divulge the name of any of our clients. <laughs> Including IBM. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Those machines can be the dick. All right, time is up now, so will you kindly take the rest of the time in marking your ballots? Without consultation, vote as you do so for number one, number two, or number three. Team of challenges will get the usual $250 for every incorrect vote. All set? All ballots marked? All right, Tom, for oh, yeah, your inimitable I? handwriting. Johnny, have you marked? If you haven't, I don't want to ask anything until we do. Okay. <coughs> yes, Tom. That's a, a open-handed handwriting of a guy who is very loose with his dough. <laughs> and probably loose with his brains, too. But it's uh, number three, I thought, because of the way she answered about the marriage counseling thing. Okay, Dina. I voted for number two, bud. Um, this was kind of... A hobby of mine once, when, when I was a little girl, I, I've forgotten most of it, but it seems to me that I, I remembered that spaces between letters meant that people couldn't keep secrets very well and didn't have anything to do with thriftiness. That's just a guess. Johnny, that, that's spaces between teeth. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I voted for number two. I'm very thrifty. <laughs> Yes, I could even say you're too thrifty. Yeah, Peggy. Well, I voted for number two because while she was answering, she was looking at the writing and sort of doing it at the same time. Huh? All right, there we have it. Let's get our push-pull system here and see how well we came out in the voting as we learn right now which one of these three ladies is the real graphologist handwriting analyst. So will the real Dorothy Sarah please stand up? Okay, let's find out about the other two analysts. Now, number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is Ethel Fisher Korn, and I write humorous greeting cards for the Oz Greeting Card Company here in New York. <laughs> <laughs> and now, number two, you've got most of the votes, three and all. What is your real name and what do you do? My name is Rosanna Lewis. I work in the Hack Drivers Bureau of the New York City Police Department. <laughs> Check our score and we find there were one, two, three incorrect votes. Very good. Challenges, very good indeed. At $250 each, that gives you a very nice total to start things off tonight of $750 for the three of you to split up. And of course, you also get from Arawax a gift package of the fine products that they make. And we thank you for being with us. You've added a lot to our fun. I hope we've given you a pleasant time. Too. Good night. God bless you. And now a word about the protection of your floor. Like Jet Age plastic, so tough that bullets bounce off. New, new Aerowax has a Jet Age plastic so tough, the new self-polishing shine lasts twice as long as ever before without buffing.
Yes, new, new Aerowax with its Jet Age plastic gives you a new, long-lasting brilliance. It's so tough, you pour a dazzling self-polishing shine that lasts twice as long as ever before, yet won't yellow floors. Yes, a brilliant shine, so tough you can grind heels on it. A shine so tough that dirt doesn't dull it. A hard, bright, gleaming shine that lasts twice as long as ever before. Remember, like Jet Age plastic, so tough bullets bounce off. New, new Aerowax has a Jet Age plastic for the brilliant shine that lasts twice as long as ever before, yet won't yellow floors. New Aerowax in the new can still saves you 23 cents. Now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Michael A. Musmano. My name is Michael A. Musmano. My name is Michael A. Musmano. Will you follow along with your copies of this next affidavit panel? I, Michael A. Musmano, am a justice of the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania. I am also an author. My latest book is entitled, Ten Days to Die and deals with the last days of Adolf Hitler's life. I devoted three years to an investigation into the facts surrounding Hitler and his death. I am thoroughly familiar with the Nazi regime. During the Eichmann trial, I was called to Israel to testify for the prosecution. This appearance was largely the result of the fact that in 1946, I was appointed by President Truman to be a judge at the Nuremberg War Crimes Trials. There I presided over what has often been referred to as the biggest murder trial in history. Signed, Michael A. Musmano. Here we have the situation of three gentlemen panel, as you heard, and did I, that uh, each one claims to be Michael Musmano, judge at the Nuremberg Trials. And we'll begin this round of questioning with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Uh, number one, who was the Gauleiter of Poland who was assassinated? The Gauleiter of Poland who was assassinated was um, Erich Stronheim. Thank you. Uh, number two, how many w went free in the Nuremberg trials? How many of the defendants? Well, there were several trials in, in the Nuremberg trials. There were 12 altogether. On the case that I presided on, there were 23 uh, defendants. 14 of them were convicted uh, and sentenced to hang. And then the others had other. I see. Number three, what happened to Schacht? You mean, uh, in the, that's in the first international military tribunal yes. trial. He was acquitted, but then later he was convicted by a German court. Tom. Oh, it's my... Thank you. Number three, do you happen to know who Irving St. Paul is? I do not. Uh, number two, I'll just ask all of you gentlemen. Number two, do you happen to know? No. Oh. Number one, do you know who Irving St. Paul is? No, I do not. Well, uh, he's a very famous jurist, and he's uh, mm. in our Supreme He used to be the Attorney General of uh, something. Like <laughs> uh, number three, what was the legal determination of Goering at the time of his trial? Do you remember? Oh, I certainly do. He was convicted and sentenced to hang, and then uh, beat the hangman's noose by taking poison. Number uh, two, how do we know Hitler isn't running a delicatessen someplace? In <laughs> well, it was fully established uh, during the three years that uh, I was at the Nuremberg trial. I interviewed about 200 people who had been in daily association with him, including the, uh, his chauffeur who burned the bodies up on front of the chancery. And Thank you. Dina. Uh, number one. Of these, these uh, 14 convicted, how many are, are still, these are, were the 14 that were convicted to death? Yes. Were, and were they all executed? No, they were not. How many of them were actually executed? Two of them committed suicide. Uh, four have been, um, had their sentences commuted. The others were executed. I see. Um, number two. Uh, of the others who were not convicted uh, of uh, the death penalty but were put in, in jail, how many have been released since then? Well, most of them, I believe. Are there any left? I don't think there are any of them left. I, I think they've all been released since that time. Johnny. Uh, number three, uh, 
Who took over from Hitler? Who did Hitler pass on command to before he died? Uh, Admiral Karl Donitz. Uh, number two, who was actually the last person to see uh, Hitler alive? The, the, well, alive or dead? The last person to see him dead was his chauffeur who uh, poured the gasoline on the bodies of he and his Eva Braun uh, in front of the chancellery. Uh, number three, who is George Rockwell? Uh, I didn't catch a question. Who is George Rockwell? George Rockwell? Rockwell. Oh, he certainly has nothing to do with, the, uh, with my book, Ten Days to Die. <laughs> no, I know he has nothing. That has nothing to do with the fact that the time is gone. You haven't even got ten seconds to question now, but you do have about that length of time to vote. So will you kindly do so? Mark your ballots yes. right now, without consultation, and vote for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? Not yet. Everybody? All right. Tom, which one did you select this time? Well, <clears throat> I was recently on a, on a jury with uh, Justice Sapol, and uh, he has such a wonderful way at the bench and such a wonderful demeanor, and I thought number three was the most like that. Uh, if, if judges have things in common, I, I, I thought that, that that way he has of sitting and, and judging us over here is sort of <laughs> similar to Justice Sapol. <laughs> Nina, which one do you think is the real one? Well, I voted for number three, too, Bud. Uh, very much the, the same reasons as Tom. He, he looks uh, more like a, uh, my idea of a judge. <laughs> Johnny. Maybe the show will get sent up or something. Huh? I, uh, <laughs> I've uh, voted for number three because he was a little shifty there at the end. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean, sir, that judges are shifty, but, uh, you know... And Peggy, going to make well, it unanimous. Huh? I voted for three because Schock did go free, and also that man was never the gall lighter of Poland, <laughs> number one, <laughs> that I know of. All right, there we have it once more. In our own moment of truth, let's discover now whether the evidence weighs heavily right or wrong, as we learn in this particular trial which one of these gentlemen is the real Nuremberg judge. So will the real Michael A. Musmano please stand up? <laughs> I must say that in addition to Judge Musmano's other accomplishments, he has a particularly and singularly distinctive record in both World War I and World War II, and we're very proud to have you with us tonight. Now, number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? I am Samuel E. Burr, Jr. I am an assistant dean and director of the summer sessions at the American University in Washington, D.C. <laughs> So by no means least, number two. Your real name and what do you do, please? My real name is Alexander C. Kidd. I'm better known as Captain Kidd. <laughs> I'm vice president of the Marriott Lane Company in Patterson, New Jersey. We design and manufacture equipment for the Navy. Thank you, sir. Well, we check the score through before you gentlemen leave, and we find that the panel is a little too smart. I guess that kind of distinction sort of radiates from the judge. And that means no incorrect ones, but in that case from Arawax, $150 to be uh, sort of carte blanche up between you, if you will. And we thank you for being with us. You'll also receive a gift package of fine products from Arawax. Good night, gentlemen, and God bless you. And now here's a word about a new sleep product. Don't lie awake again tonight. Take Sleepies. The next thing you know, it's morning. Sleep safely with Sleepies, effective as phenobarbital, yet no drug hangover, no drug habit. When your wake center is active, you can't sleep. Medically proved Sleepies turns off the wake center, brings on the start of sleep. You close your eyes. Next thing you know, it's morning. Sleepies used as directed, effective as phenobarbital, yet so safe. No drug hangover, no drug habit. And now a word about Dristan Nasal Mist. For sinus congestion and head colds distress, use Dristan Nasal Mist with a decongestant most prescribed by doctors to bring quick, deep relief. Look, the nasograph shows almost no air through this victim's nostrils. 
Now, Drist and Mist sprayed into one nostril. In seconds, it penetrates deep into swollen nasal and sinus passages, promotes drainage, thus relieves pressure, controls post-nasal irritation. Now, nostril sprayed with Dristan shows free breathing restored. Get Dristan Nasal Mist. Now panel our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Ann Sidlowska. My name is Ann Sidlowska. My name is Ann Sidlowska. Again, panel, follow along with this third affidavit, if you will, please. I, Ann Sidlowska, am a sophomore at Indiana University. My hobby is playing billiards. I played for the first time when I was nine years old, but began to get serious about the game only recently. I was one of the college girls selected in regional competition to compete in the National Collegiate Billiards Tournament. I won the title of National College Co-Ed Pocket Billiards Champion. Signed, Ann Sidlowskis. All right, we heard these three young ladies each claiming to be Ann Sidlowskis, Pocket Billiards Champion. We start with our own Pocket Billiards Champ, Johnny Carson. Johnny? Uh, number one, very quickly, spell your last name. S-I-D-L-A-U-S-K-A-N. Number two, is that right? Yes. Number three, is that right? Yes. <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, number, number three, what is, Indiana is known as the what state? Hoosier. Hoosier. Right. Okay. Number, number two, can you tell me one of the top football players at Indiana University? They're all pretty bad. <laughs> I don't think I'd like to... They're all pretty bad. <laughs> but you're not going to make the dean's list this year, either. Uh, Peggy. Um, where, number one, where is Indiana University? Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, number three, uh, what is the principal industry of Gary, Indiana? I don't know. Number one, do you know? <laughs> I think it's steel. Uh, number two, what is, uh, who is Willie Hoppy? Willie Hoppy was the greatest three-cushion billiards player there ever was. Uh, number three, what do they call that green stuff that covers the pool table? Felt. Crabgrass. Money. Crabgrass. <laughs> Tom Poston. Uh, number one, what's na another name for French pool? I don't know. Do you know number two? No, I number don't. Number three, just by chance. Do you know, uh, wh how do you, what's, number three, what's straight pool? Straight pool is when you call your shots as you play them without playing rotation. Thank you. Number two, what's Kelly pool? Kelly pool is a gambling form of pool. You draw numbers and shoot that ball. Uh, thank you. Number one, what kind of chalk do you use? Q chalk. And number one... <laughs> Gina Merrill. <laughs> number one, what's that thing called that, that uh, helps you make a shot when it's far away? Bridge. Um, number two, who, what is the name of the, the national ladies champion, the senior? I don't know. Champion. Do you know number three? No, I don't. Do you know number one? No, I don't. What about the men's champion? Do you know number one? Willie Moscone. You agree with that, number two? Well, he's the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll go along with that. Yeah, yeah. Is, he, is he also uh, national men's champion? I don't know. Number three, do you know? Yes. Yes, yes you know, yes, he is. That's it. Okay, take the balls off the table there and put the cues up in the rack and let's go for the voting. Mark the ballots, if you will, please, and mark them now. Without consultation, vote for number one, number two, or number three. Chalk mm. your cues and mark your ballots there. Can I ask some more questions, Bob? Yeah. Oh, I wish you could. I wish you could. <laughs> Okay, we all set? <laughs> all right, Tom, which one? <coughs> I voted for number one, bud. Uh, it was just a guess. It was between number one and number three, and, and uh, I wasn't even thinking of number three until right at the very end. Dina. Well, I, I voted for number two, because she looks like a typical co-ed to me. <laughs> and I don't know anything about vineyards. Johnny. I was thinking of number three from the very beginning. <laughs> so I vote for number three. <laughs> and Peggy, which one do you think is the real one? I voted for number three because she looks like a typical pool player. <laughs> <laughs> well, she can take that any way she likes. Let's see how we take it. The votes are in, the minds are made up, and the balls Something are back like in the Jackie rack. Let's see what we do now. <laughs> As we learn which one of these ladies is the real pocket billiards champion. So will the real 
and Sidlaskis, please stand up. Really fooled them. Okay, number two, you got a vote. What is your real name and what do you really do? My name is Pat Bodine and I work for Family Circle Magazine in the promotion department. <laughs> You're the great one. Not in the pool room, in other words. <laughs> I say, not in the pool room. No. Number three, you got two votes. What is your real name? You who looks the most like a billiard player. My name is Belinda Dotson, and I work as a cocktail waitress at the room in the bottom in the Greenwich Village. Hey, that's right. <laughs> well, you did all right, ladies. You really kind of fooled the panel that time. They did so well the last time we didn't know where they were going. But here it is, one, two, three incorrect votes at $250 each. A grand total is split amongst you of $750. Not bad. That from Arrowax as well as a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Arrowax. If we added entertainment to your evening, you certainly added it to ours as well as gracing it with your prettiness. Good night to you and God bless you. I'll be away for a little while for a couple of weeks vacation and in my absence, my good friend Merv Griffin will be here, whom I sure you all love, as do I. Well, I guess that's about it, panel. There's nothing left to say, but good night to you. Good night, good night bud. Good night, bud. Bud Collier saying good night for Arrowax and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. The preceding program has been pre-recorded. <laughs> to Tell the Truth has been brought to you tonight by Sleepies, the non-narcotic sleeping tablet for a good night's sleep. That's Sleepy. Now this is Johnny Olson saying good night for To Tell the Truth.